protection around this campus to protect us and keep us. Father, we thank you today. Have your way tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, put those hands together. Amen. Amen. Hey, grab your Bibles. Uh, go to the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 17. Will you find Luke chapter number 17 um, as we delve into our study for tonight? I pray that you brought some type of note-taking device where you can take some notes because there are some things I'm going to share with you tonight. Tonight's going to be one of those teachings that I think is going to be transformative for you. I think it's going to change. It's going to shift maybe some thinking for, for many of us. I pray that it empowers you. I pray that it encourages you. Um, so the word that God placed on my heart last Wednesday was kingdom. We started talking about the kingdom, uh, the kingdom of God. We talked about inheritance, uh, your inheritance in the kingdom. Uh, we shared, you know, the group that God said they're not going to inherit. They're going to lose their inheritance. And we talked about birthright. Um, so the past couple of teachings and sermons, I've been talking about inheritance and birthright. Um, so this past Wednesday, I gave you some homework. And I wanted you to go home and I wanted you to do a little bit of study about kingdom, about kingdom. So I need, I need a few of you just to tell me something that you discovered about the kingdom uh, in, your, in your study time. Somebody just tell me a few things that you discovered about kingdom. Somebody who actually um, went home and you said, man, I'm going to do a little research on kingdom. Yeah. Somebody, somebody help me. Help me out. Somebody. The kingdom is internal. Okay. Yes, ma'am. The kingdom is heaven. Okay. So, someone else? God's will on earth, doing things his way on earth. Okay. Okay. The kingdom is Jesus, and that's why we lose our inheritance, because sin separates us from him, from his presence. Okay. All right. Kingdom. Okay. Kingdom. You going to do it? You going to run it? Okay. Right back here. Yeah. Yeah, kingdom. We're just, trying to, we're just trying to get it on the live date so people on live want to hear you. Just, had, just wanted to say the kingdom is in you. <laughs> kingdom is in you? We look for it everywhere else, but the kingdom, for, according to scripture, the kingdom, kingdom is, is in us. Of you. Okay, all right. Kingdom. Somebody else. What you find out about kingdom? I got over here. I got over here. Amen. Yeah, Pastor, I was running. <laughs> Amen. Come on, Shep. Shep, get a microphone. You got your running shoes on. Kingdom. The kingdom of God, the spiritual realm over which God reigns as king, or the fulfillment on earth of God's will. Okay, read that again. Read that again. Read that again. You, you, did, you did some college homework. The spiritual realm over which God reigns as king, or the fulfillment on earth of God's will. Okay, oh, we're going to deal with that. We're going to deal with that. We, we're talking about kingdom, the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, oftentimes used synonymous in scripture. What's the kingdom? Uh, one of the things that I learned is that uh, the kingdom of God, it's not a physical kingdom. It is a transformation of heart and mind. Okay. A way of believing and living in preparation for eternity. Good. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, then your citizenship is no longer of this world. You are a citizen of heaven. Come on, girl. Come on. Now read that again. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Y'all listen. No, no, no. Y'all listen. Some of y'all did y'all homework. <laughs> she did y'all homework for y'all. So y'all listen. So y'all listen. Okay, do that again. Tell them what the, tell them what the, the what kingdom the, of God is not a physical kingdom. Uh -huh. It is a transformation of heart and mind, uh -huh. a way of believing and living in preparation for eternity. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, then your citizenship is no longer of this world. You are a citizen of heaven. Okay, hold that microphone. Now, listen, I need somebody on this side to, to paraphrase what she just said. I'm going to have her say it again. Someone on this side who's really paying attention. I need you to paraphrase what she said. So this side of here, crunk it in this side. Okay, so, 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 <laughs> so, so I want her to say it one more time. And someone on this side, I want y'all to paraphrase. Y'all ready? So he's got the mic, so you raise your hand. Okay, say it one more time. Listen very carefully. The kingdom of God is not a physical kingdom. Mm -hmm. It is a transformation of heart and mind, a way of believing and living in preparation for eternity. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, then your citizenship is no longer of this world. You are a citizen of heaven. Okay. All right. Uh, well, listen, y'all, listen, y'all, uh-uh. No, give me that mic. No, I don't want you to say nothing. Uh-uh. No, nope. I don't want you to answer it. No. Nope. Somebody else. Somebody else. Someone else. Okay. Get it, Dulce. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Uh-uh. Let's see what happens. 
So you, you always trying to jump up and cover everybody. You're trying to be everybody's mama. You can't do that. <clears throat> All right. Be, so because of our dual citizenship, that means that God has given us dominion. You better, you better throw kingdom. that dual citizenship in there. I, heard, I, I saw what you did there. Okay. Okay. Because we have dual citizenship, that means that we have dominion to reign in, in this in earth so we can bring the kingdom of God of heaven. That means his precepts, his statutes, what he says, his laws and decrees to bring forth in the earth so we have dominion over the kingdom of darkness by walking in our identity that God has called in his kingdom. Because of the lack of identity shit, whatever. Um, because of the lack of identity, the, it seems like the kingdom of darkness in this present time has taken over, but the devil is a lie. Because all we have to do is step on what the word of God says, and he says, you are made in my image. So what you decree and declare, it shall be established in heaven has already happened. All you have to do is take up the word of God and declare it over every area. What area do you say? In the school systems, in the accounting systems, in the White House in Jesus mighty name we have dominion and that's what the enemy stole in the garden but we because of the grace and the blood of Jesus we are walking in that citizenship now to say no we the what the word of God says is this that and the third and it shall be established in Jesus name. come on girl two snaps in a circle <laughs> now, now hold on don't say I need you to say that one more time to this side over here say, <laughs> okay, just kidding. Just, just, just kidding. Just kidding. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? We got one more? Okay, all right, here we go. So, so for those just coming in, so we're just kind of going over our homework for last week. The last week I gave you guys some homework to look up uh, the word kingdom, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, and just kind of tell me your findings. Yes, ma'am. One of the things I found, I said that in the kingdom we find hope, peace, joy and purpose that can only be found through living under God's roof. Good job. Good job. Everybody's doing great. Everybody's doing good. Everybody's doing well, I got time for one more. One more. Time for one more. One more person. Okay. Okay. We got two more over here. We'll grab those two and we'll be done. Um, I read in Hebrews 12 and 28, God's kingdom cannot be shaken. That's right. Amen. It's a kingdom incorruptible. incorruptible. Right behind you. Behind you. I won't compare to what she said. <laughs> this is what I found. I was at work, and I found this real quick. Okay. Seeking God's kingdom, meaning desiring that Jesus rule, be recognized and obeyed in three realms. I meant to look that up, but I didn't get a chance to. Mm -hmm. Within your own life, in your circle of immediate influence, and as far around the world as you can reach. Amen. I like it. I like Y'all give everyone a hand. Everyone, give everyone a hand. Amen. Amen. So, um, so tonight's teaching is, is, going to, is going to push your teaching beyond things that you have currently heard or currently know. It's going to push us into purpose. It's going to push us into another realm. It's going to push you spiritually, mentally uh, into another realm of thinking. Um, are y'all in Luke chapter number 17? Luke chapter 17, um, verse, number, verse number 20, verse number 20. This is a very interesting conversation with Jesus and the Pharisees. Luke chapter 17, verse 20. Everybody turn there, your Bible, your phone, whatever you have. says, now when he asked the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, now, when he was asked by the Pharisees, excuse me, when the kingdom of God would come, he, Jesus, answered them and he said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. What he means here is the Pharisees were looking for a castle. They were looking for a castle and a moat. They were looking for knights in shining armor. They were looking for soldiers. They were looking for servants, hundreds or thousands of servants. And, and Jesus said, wait a minute, the kingdom that you're thinking about, right. that's not the kingdom that's coming. Right. The kingdom that's coming, it's going to come, but you're not going to see it. 
It's going to come without observation. Here's what he says. He says, nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God, wait a minute, it's within you. Glory to God. The kingdom of God is within you. So uh, my, my title tonight is The Kingdom Revealed. The Kingdom Revealed. Some of the excerpts I'm going to share with you tonight comes from a teaching from Dr. Miles Monroe. If you've never, if you've never heard any of his teachings, never read any of his books, go get some of his books because he do, he, he's probably um, one of the greatest teachers on the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Now, let's... So, Miles, Dr. Monroe gives a brilliant definition. It's kind of long, and I apologize for it, so you guys can take a picture of it. But he gives a great and brilliant, what I think is a brilliant definition of the word kingdom. Um, and the reason I'm talking about this this week or, or these next few weeks or whatever this goes is because I need you to understand, like Dulce said, I need you to understand your citizenship. I need you to understand that there are certain rights and privileges that you have that sometimes we don't operate in simply because we just don't know. Listen to this definition of kingdom that Dr. Miles Monroe gave. He said, a kingdom is a governing influence of a king over his territory. Imp let's read it together. Y'all, let's read it together. One, two, ready, read. A kingdom is a governing influence of a king over his territory, impacting it with his will, his purpose, and his intent producing a citizenry of people who express his culture and reflect his nature. It's the influence of a king over a territory. Now, this is important because unless you understand kingdoms, it's very difficult to understand the Bible. We grew up in a, most of us in this room grew up in a democracy. Everybody say democracy. democracy. We grew up in a democracy where we, we vote for our president, we vote for our leaders, our civic leaders. We, so, so we have a say, but in a kingdom, you don't get to vote for the king. Right. In, in a kingdom, you don't have any say in what the king decides. Yeah. King many times is a, is a monarch, and he is, he's the, he's the supreme ruler by himself. In a kingdom, there is, no, there is no authority above the king's rule. He's the supreme ruler of whatever region or territory that he's been given governance. That's why in the Bible, when you find a king that submits to God, that's why that was so special to God because kings really didn't have to submit to anybody. So when, a, when, you, when you see a king after God's own heart, then that was, a, that was a very special thing. Again, so when a king, when a king makes a decree, that decree that he makes becomes law and nobody challenges his law. That's why King Nebuchadnezzar could say, throw those boys into the furnace and nobody walks up to the king and says, hey, king, man, come on, man. Come on, man. You've been a little bit too hard on him, don't you think of that? And you know what king would have said? He would have said, oh, you think I'm being too hard on him? Throw him in there, too. And nobody would have nobody would have challenged the king. So so kingdom is so so vitally important. Now listen to this. The Bible is a story. It's a story about a king. This whole book is a story about a king. That's so cool. But it's not a story about a king and his servants. The Bible is a story about a royal family. The Bible is a story about a king and his children. Glory to God. A king and his offspring. Now watch this. You need to know that you are seated beside a king's kid. You're seated beside a child of the king. So not only is the, is the Bible a book about a king, not only is it a book about a king and his children, it's also a book of the law. Right. And we'll talk about that in a minute. It's a book that God gave us to establish his law. Now we got to, so, so, so it, it, it begs to question, why did God leave this for us? 
Why does we call this the book of God's law? Why do we, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, there's a scripture that says the book of the law shall not depart from me. You know, he's talking about this book of the law. The book of the law shall not depart from me. He says, but in it, I'm going to meditate on it. How often? He, I'm going to meditate on it day and night. Why am I going to med- med- meditate on it day and night? You know why? So that I will not sin against you. So that I can have good Success. Now, wait a minute. Let's talk about the success. So we got to go back and we got to figure out what success we're talking about. Because oftentimes when we read the Bible, we read the Bible in a very selfish mindset. We read the Bible as if the Bible, as if, as if uh, we want all the blessings and the goodness and all those things. And we want success in our business, success in our homes, and success in our families. Those things are good. But that's not the primary reason. Why, or that's, that's not the primary success that we should be looking for. Because watch this, God was very, Jesus was very clear when Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom. Yeah. You know what you guys did this week? Y'all know what y'all did? Y'all were seeking the kingdom. Yeah. He said, seek ye first the kingdom and righteousness. And what's going to happen? Oh. All these other things are going to be added to you. Now, we got to deal with this whole success thing. We got to deal with this whole kingdom thing. We got to figure this out. We got to figure it out. Okay. All right. Um, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 50. 1 Corinthians 15, go there real quick, make sure I'm telling y'all the truth. 1 Corinthians 15. Look down at verse number 50. Now, what does, what does your Bible say? Read it. One, two, ready, read. Now this, now this I say, brethren, brethren that the flesh, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. If you haven't underlined that, underline that right now. So you know what that means? You know what that means? That means that my inheritance, my inheritance can't be received or my, 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 my spiritual inheritance can't be received in this natural body. There's some blessings I can get in this body. There's some goodness and favor and mercy and things that happen in this body. But the Bible says that, that, there's a, that the kingdom can't be inherited by flesh and blood. So you know what that means? That means that, that means that there's an inheritance that God has for me but that's another me that he has inheritance for. Right. That's another me. Not my flesh me. Right. Not my flesh me, but my spirit. Now, here's what you need to understand in, in this principle. Here's what you need to understand. That, that um, you are not a body with a spirit in it. Come on, come on, yeah, 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 yeah. You are a spirit with a body around it. Yeah. Glory to God. Right. You got to know that although, although you were born on earth, you didn't come from earth. Right. You were in the mind of God before your mom and dad ever got together. God sent us. He sent us here on this earth to do a work. Now, here's the question. The question is, what work did God send us here to do? What work? If we're citizens of heaven, because, because yeah, we're born in sin, shaping iniquity, we get that. And some people were asking, well, I was born like this, born this good. But the good news, because of how you were born the first time. Jesus said, if you're going to inherit the kingdom, you must be born again. That's what he tells Nicodemus. Nicodemus goes to Jesus at night. Nicodemus was like, yo, Jay, man, I've been hearing you talk about this whole born again thing. He asks Jesus, says, say, say man, so, so does that mean I got to climb back in my mama's womb? Like, what's up this born again? Jesus said, that was born of flesh is flesh. I'm not talking about your flesh birth. I'm talking about giving birth to a new spirit. That there's a new spirit that's going to be birthed on the inside of you. That, that connects you with the spirit, that connects you with the kingdom. Okay, all right, all right. Now, um, um, so um, let, let's look at the, king, the kingdom of God. And I like, I like the definition that y'all, y'all have given. Here's a kind of a synopsis. The kingdom of God is the sovereign rule and reign of God in the hearts of man and over the entire universe. It's the sovereign rule of God in the hearts of man and over the entire universe. Okay, the Bible is about a king, the Bible is about a royal family, and the Bible is about a kingdom, a kingdom, kingdom, kingdom dominion. Uh, When God created you and I, when he created humanity, he gave him what's called radar. That word was dominion, kingdom. He gave us radar, which means that God gave us authority. He gave us authority to operate, watch this, from the kingdom. Because we are ambassadors from the kingdom. Right. 
Glory to God. Listen, do me a favor. This is going, this is going to be real cool. Will you introduce yourself to your neighbor and tell them your name and tell them, hello, I am, a, I am an ambassador from the kingdom of heaven. Just tell them. I'm gonna... Woo, that's it right there. I'm an ambassador. I'm an ambassador. And, and guess what? You did not lie. It's the truth. If you're saved, you're an ambassador from the kingdom. So you know what that means? That means that there is a culture. That means that there's a lifestyle. There, there are some laws that, that you are supposed to be helping institute here in this earth. I'll prove it to you in just a moment. Prove it in just a moment. And sometimes we forget that we're ambassadors of heaven. We forget that we're an ambassador. Glory to God. What does an ambassador do? So yell it out. Y'all are smart. This is a good class. What does an ambassador do? Represents their head of state. Somebody else. Ambassador. Market. <laughs> Speak on behalf of what? Speaks on behalf of God. Advocate for God. They're going to say the same thing. They're just taking the words right out of his mouth. Okay. So we all, when you get saved, we all are ambassadors. So that means that we can't act a fool. Right, 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 right. <laughs> or we shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We, we shouldn't <laughs> because we're ambassadors. Let me, let me ask y'all this. At what point of the day do you take your ambassador badge off? Do you ever take it off? So that means that now you got to walk right, you need to sleep right. <laughs> we, we don't take it off. You're always an ambassador. You're an ambassador of the kingdom. And you're an ambassador. Okay, all right. So the Bible is about a king. It's about a royal family. It's about a kingdom. It's about a government. Now, here is the big part. Here's the big part. The Bible is about a colonization project. The Bible is about a colonization project because here's what we've been taught. Here's what I've been taught. I was taught that um, um, what God wants to do, his ultimate goal is to get us in heaven. That's what I've been taught, and I've been taught that for many years. But when you start studying the kingdom, you say, wait a minute. Are the saved people going to heaven? Yes, but that's not God's ultimate goal. God's ultimate goal was not to get us or you to heaven. God's ultimate goal was to get heaven to come to earth. It's got ultimate goal. It's his ultimate goal. Um, that's why they prayed the prayer. They said, they said um, let your will be done on earth. Ooh, y'all know the Lord's prayer. Let your will be done on earth as it's being done in heaven. So we're so focused, we're so focused, or have been so focused on getting to heaven that we've lost focus on bringing heaven to earth. Is it any wonder why our earth is groaning the way it is? I'm sitting at home this week, and I'm, I'm looking at the storms. And I'm looking, oh, man, this is, this is some weird storms. There's some weird stuff going on. You know what's happening? The earth is groaning. The earth is groaning in anticipation of the coming of our Lord and Savior. I mean, there's some weird, there's some, there's some earthquakes and fires, and man, there's some weird stuff that's happening. Now, listen, if you're spiritual, you sit in your house and you got to say something. Something's going on. This is this is not natural. This this is this is some supernatural stuff that's going on. God's trying to get somebody's attention. Might I say to you, I believe God's trying to get the church's attention. I've had a lot of storms, but this is the first time I've had, I've, I've, got a, I've got a clock on my nightstand. We had many, many storms. It's the first time that the storm ever took my clock out. My clock doesn't work. I came to church. We had a clock in our church, and the clock in the church doesn't work. And so I've been looking at this thing like, okay, Lord, Lord, what are, what are you saying to us? I, I think God is saying to the church, it's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to be mindful of the time. Because, because before I could go to sleep, I couldn't even go to sleep the last night because I was afraid I was going to oversleep. I became very mindful of the time when I could no longer see the time. That's why many people have been in darkness this week. Because when you're in darkness, you can't see the time. And, and many times, it, it, the cloud cover doesn't really let you know what time it is outside. You'd be saying, what, what time is it? What time is it? 
And I think that God is call, causing us to say, okay, you need to, to look at the time, be mindful of the time, and know that, man, his time draws nigh. Okay, all right. The colonization project, the extension of a king's influence over a foreign territory. Here's what happens. When, when a king takes his throne, what he wants to do, he wants to expand his reach. He wants to expand his influence. So what does he do? He takes ambassadors. Send those ambassadors into a territory. They go into that territory, and what they do is they set up themselves in prominent offices, and they start to teach. They start to teach. Uh, uh, they start to teach the structure of the king. They start to teach. Here's what the king does. That's why in English they, they eat, they eat, they drink tea and, and crumpets. Every colony, every, every territory that's connected to the king, that's what they do. At a certain time every day, they're going to drink tea. They're going to eat. They're going to eat a biscuit, the sweet biscuit. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. But that's how kings, that's how they take over territory is they start colonies. They start these groups of people. Groups of people go in, they got the heart of the king, they understand you talk like the king, you walk like the king. When the king wakes up, you wake up while the king wakes up. If the king has his bed pointing a certain type of way, you have your bed pointing, pointing that certain type of way, and that, that's kind of part of the colony. Now, wait a minute. So, so wait a minute. If, if God is a king, he's the king of kings. He's the king of kings. God also wants to expand his influence. He wants to expand his influence from heaven to the earth. So what does he do? He sent colonizers. <laughs> you and I are colonizers. We're supposed to be. We're, we're colonizers because we know the king's law. We have the king's law book. So it's our responsibility to be here at helping to establish God's kingdom, his legal rule and reign on the earth by sharing with people who don't understand God's law, sharing that law with them so that God's law now becomes their law. So this is, so it's not about you getting a new car, new house and all that and all that stuff is, all that stuff is nice. But here's the question, here's the question. Have you been a good citizen and have you helped to colonize any of the territory that God gave to you? So listen, here's what we've said. We've said, and I've said it, we've said, wherever the soles of your feet tread, I'll give you that country. I'll give you that area. What he was talking about is wherever you go. To colonize. Wherever you make it up in your mind that you're going to go and you're going to share the gospel. What he's saying is, I'm going to give you favor in that area. And the people that you go to win, I'm going to give you favor to win them because the grace of God I'm going to place on your life. You know what we got to do? That means we got to be about our father's business. Jesus said that when he was, when he was 12 years old. He, says he was in the, in the temple. He was talking to some of, the, uh, some of the officials in the temple. His mom and dad came and said, man, what you doing? You know what Jesus said? Wait a minute, mom. Don't you know? I'm a colonizer. Don't you know that I've got to be about? I've got to be about my father's business. I've got to tell people about the law. Because God sent me here to do a work. I'm on this earth to do a work. I'm not, on this, I'm not on this earth just to go to work and make a paycheck and build a house for myself. No, 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 no. I'm a citizen. I'm a citizen of heaven, which means that I've got a work to do. Let me prove that. Let me prove that to you. Let me prove that to you. Colonizing the kingdom. A colony is a group of people from one country who build a settlement in another territory of land. Go to Matthew chapter 28. Go to Matthew chapter 28. You've read this before, but I bet you you're going to see it different today. You're going to see this scripture totally different when you look at it today. Go to Matthew chapter 28. You're going to see it totally different. Matthew chapter 28. We're talking about the kingdom. We're talking about the kingdom revealed, expanding the kingdom, taking the kingdom to the next level, taking our approach to the kingdom. That's why I serve is so important. I serve gives us a chance to, to take the kingdom we take the kingdom to people's houses. We take the kingdom because the kingdom is in us. 
and we take the kingdom close to them. Do you know that every time somebody comes close to you, they come close to the kingdom? Listen, Terry Neville, you have no idea how close you're sitting to the kingdom right now. Tell them, tell them, you have no idea how close you're sitting to the kingdom. Come on, man. You got to, you, 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 because the kingdom is in me. And what's in me got to come out of me. The kingdom is in you. The kingdom is in us. Where did I tell y'all to go? Matthew 20, what verse did I tell y'all? I didn't tell y'all nothing. I didn't tell y'all 16, so y'all tell that story. Uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some of y'all getting to get back in the kingdom. Okay. <laughs> Matthew 28, 16, y'all there? New King James Version reads like this. It says, then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, what did he say? How much authority? How much authority? How much authority? All authority has been given to who? Me, which means who? Jesus. Been given to Jesus from where? In heaven and what? On earth, so he says, I have all authority. That means he's king. He says, I have all authority. He didn't say, well, well, I have to fill out the P.O. and somebody else got to sign it. I have all authority. I just told you that's what a king has. All authority has been given to me. He's telling you, I've got all authority from heaven and on earth. I have all authority. It's been given to me. Now, what did he say to them? Verse number 19. Go and do what? Go make the, I need you to go and spread the kingdom. I need you to go and, I need you to go and bring heaven down to earth. I need you to go take the book of the law. I need you to share with people, share with people God's law. Tell them about God's love and we, we understand God's love and God's grace, but you understand that, that God, God has a book of law. God has a book of precepts, things that he said. When God said thou shalt not commit adultery, he meant that. That's a law. Thou shalt not covet. He meant that. That's a law. He does so. There, so go. I need you to go and I need you to colonize. I need you to tell people. Uh, tell people about my law. Look at what it said. Verse number 19. He said, go therefore and make disciples. The word disciples means what? Who knows what the word disciple means? Means learner. Means learner. I need you to go and make learners. I need you to go and make learners. That's the great commission for all of us. To go and make learners. Have you ever wondered why? You ever wonder why God didn't put all Christians on the same job? You ever wonder about that? I wondered, what if God put all Christians on the same job? What would that be like? Somebody said, huh? What if all Christians on the same job? Let me talk to this crowd back here. Y'all quiet. What if all Christians were on the same job? Say what? We'd have limited growth. Why? Because we're on the same job, so it's basically that other people are lacking. We're all working on the same thing. In place where other people are lacking, we're all working on one thing. Limited growth. Okay. All Christians on the same job. I thought that would be cool, wouldn't it? Why would y'all say, why y'all say no? Wow, let me get back from back here. This one. Why do you say no? Why do you say no with all Christians on the same job? Say what? Why would the rest of the world suffer if all Christians were on the same job? <laughs> I ain't tell you to get the whole answer. <laughs> okay. So do you know, now she just gave the answer, but do you know why all Christians, God did put all Christians on the same job? You know why? Say what? Because only Christians could fulfill them? Something like that? Why did God not put all Christians on the same job? Why? Because of what? Because the word wouldn't spread. So you mean to tell me, if God puts you on a job, you mean to tell me he expects you to spread the word? Now, wait a minute. What if you the only Christian on your job and you won't say anything about him? That's why you got fired. 
Not because you were a bad employee. <laughs> God didn't put somebody else in there. He put you in there to spread the word. He put you in there to be a light in darkness. That's why you work on a job with a bunch of folks that raise hell all the time. That's why you work there, because he put you there to bring heaven down on earth. He put you there to colonize. If, 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 you, don't get, if you don't convert but one, you start with one. You start with that one that's real cool. Listen, they come around you cussing, just let them cuss. Just let them cuss. You just keep smiling, just let them cuss. After they get through cursing, here's what you're asking. What church you go to? No, no, you're on your job to call on. Here's my question. Here's my question. How, watch this. Raise your hand if you've been saved at least 10 years. Okay. Hand, oh, oh, wow, a lot of y'all. Put your hand down. Put your hand down. Now, watch this. Why have you not at least won 10 souls to Christ? Come on now. Come on. Why have you not at least won 10 souls? I ain't talking to y'all. Stop trying to put shoes on that don't fit. That ain't good. You know that shoe didn't fit you. <laughs> but, but think about that. Think about that. Like how many, how many souls, how many people have been converted as a result of you being on that job? You ought to make it up in your mind. Man, listen, man, somebody going to get their soul to the Lord. And you start praying. Because nobody comes to the Father unless God do the drawing. So what you do, you say, God, when I go to work, show me who you've been drawing. Yeah. Yeah. And it may be somebody that you least expect. Yeah. God, use me as a vessel. God, I'm a colonizer. I am. I'm an ambassador of heaven. So, God, I know you put me here. Listen, there was a time I would go into places. I don't want to talk to people. I like y'all. I love y'all, but I don't like y'all like that sometimes. I guess y'all didn't like that either. <laughs> I'm, I'm naturally introverted. I really am. I'm naturally introverted. So, so I recharge being by myself. But I, I've learned that when God sends me out, I go to the mall, I go to the restaurant, I go whatever. I, I've learned that I have to say, okay, Lord, if there's somebody in here that needs a word, God use me. God use me for your will because I understand I'm a citizen of heaven. And I understand that I might be somebody's last hope. I got, and I get that. I understand that. Okay. All right. Um, verse number, look at, look at Matthew 28, 16. Excuse me. Yeah, oh, no, 28, 19. Go to 28, 19. Go, therefore, make disciples out of how many nations? Oh. All the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look at verse number 20. Yeah. Teach. Teaching them what? Yeah. Teaching them to do what? Why in the world is Jesus telling the disciples to teach them to observe? To observe what? Uh, look, <laughs> teach them everything that I've commanded. So you know what that means? That means that you've got to learn what he's commanded and to observe the commandments that you've learned. That's why seeking the kingdom is important. That's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom and righteousness, everything else will be added. So he says, now read verse number 20 again. Y'all read it from your Bible. Once you ready to read. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Teach them to obey. Teach them Teach them to observe, to obey the things I have commanded. Teach them the things that are in the law. Teach them what's in the law. And when you do that, I'm going to be with you. See, we read that as if it was only for the 11 disciples. And we forget that that same principle was for you and for me. That we're supposed to be doing the same thing. Glory to God. We're supposed to be teaching people how to understand more about the kingdom. You know what? When people, when people ask you, when people ask you, they said, man, it seems like you never have a bad day. That's a great opportunity. It seems like you never have a bad day. 
Glory to God. Rodney said, I'm having one right now. <laughs> Does somebody get it? You never have a bad day. That's a great opportunity to share the kingdom. Because you know what you tell them? What does, okay, what does the law say? What does the law of God say about bad days that you can say that puts them back to the law? All things work together for the good. The reason it seems that way is because I'm a citizen. I'm a citizen of heaven, and I know that all things are working together for my good. They're going to look at you a little different when you tell them that all things is working together for my good. Give me another kingdom principle about bad days. Here it is. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. I'm a, I, I'm a king's kid. So I, so I have to rejoice because I have a principle of rejoicing. Glory to God. Give me one more, one more, one more. Yes, ma'am. Weeping may endure for a night. When you start talking like that around people, they start asking questions about you. They start looking at you funny. King Agrippa told Paul, says, man, you almost, you almost persuaded me to become a Christian. You almost, you almost got me. When you start talking like that and sharing those principles, and people start seeing you. They start, start seeing your life. So when people point to you, you always point back to him. Let me say that again. When people point to you, you always point them back to him. Glory to God. That's why God said, let your light, so I'm teaching better than y'all understand. That's why God said, let your light so shine before men so that they may see your good works and then you teach them how to glorify the Father which is in heaven. Preach, Pastor Love. I'm doing the best that I can. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Go to Matthew chapter 10. You've read this, but you're, not, you're going to see it different today. Go to Matthew chapter 10. You've read all these scriptures. You're going to see it different today. You're going to learn today. Matthew chapter 10. <laughs> Are y'all there? Let's, let's look at this in context. Matthew chapter 10, look at verse number 5. Let's look at it. It says, these 12 Jesus sent out, he commanded them, do not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not enter the city of the Samaritans. Now, you got to understand context so you can appreciate the content. He was not telling them that the Samaritans were off, off limits. That's not what he was saying. What he was saying was, don't bypass the people that's right around you trying to go to somebody else that you feel like you need to go to. In other words, you got homeless people in Longview. You don't have to go way overseas to deal with homelessness. You got homelessness right around you. In, uh, in other words, he says, listen, you need to deal with what's around That's what he says. Deal with what's around you. Look at verse number six. He says, but go rather right over to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right. Now watch this. Look at verse number seven. We're still talking about the kingdom. The kingdom revealed. Verse number seven. What did he say? As you go do what? Preach. Preach. Saying what? Y'all need to underline that. When you go, I need you to preach. Do you know that Jesus preached the kingdom more than any other sermon that he ever preached? I mean, he preached about kingdom more than he preached about money. Matter of fact, Jesus really didn't preach about healing. He just healed people. Right, right. He just healed them. Right. But Jesus preached about the kingdom. Right. He was always talking about the kingdom. And if that's what Jesus preached, then maybe we should yes, consider preaching yes, kingdom. Maybe we should consider looking at this kingdom thing, looking at kingdom. Now, um, he said, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Look at verse number eight. What did he tell them to do? Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Yeah. What else? Yeah. Cleanse the lepers. Go ahead. Yeah. Raise the dead. What else? Yeah. Cast out demons. Keep going. Yeah. Freely you ever see. Keep going. Yeah. Freely give. Look at verse number nine. What did he say? Provide, Provide neither gold, nor silver, nor copper in your money belts. Verse number 10 nor bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staff, 
for a worker is worthy of his fruit. He said, when you go, when you go, I want you to heal. When you go, I want you to heal. I want you to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. He said, you've been given a power. You've been given a power to do this. Now watch this. This power is not so that people can brag about you. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. Run from preachers. Run from pastors who God has given a, given a little bit of anointing. And they're able to do a few things and, and God allows them to do some things and, and they, they got this big light shining on themselves. Run from them. Because, because the, healing was, the, the healing was so that people can question about the kingdom. It all points back to the kingdom. He said, do this, preach. I need you to preach. I need you to heal. So when you heal, that people will come around. When they come around and ask you about the healing, you can tell them that it wasn't me. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I unto thee. I don't have anything. That's why he said, I don't, want you to, I don't want you to take any money. Don't take anything because I don't want you to get caught up in thinking that it's you. I want you to go, but I want you to be totally dependent upon me. Don't even take food with you. Don't take no money. Don't take no purse. Don't even take a change of clothes because this is so imperative that I need you totally sold out and totally dependent upon me is what God was saying. And that's what God is saying to us. We got to be totally dependent upon him. That's what faith is. The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. That's what he's saying. Don't take all that stuff because if you take all that stuff, then what you're going to do is you're going to proclivity to start focusing and start depending on your things more than you do God. That's exactly what we've done as a nation. We're so dependent upon our stuff. So dependent upon our things. Life's wild. We don't know what to do. We panic. Y'all should have grew up in the country. Y'all grew up in the country like we did. Yeah. This, this, hill up, this hill above some of y'all country pay grade. But we used to go outside and take a mason jar. We used to catch a bunch of lightning bugs. Yeah. Yeah. Above y'all pay grade. Y'all don't understand that. Yeah. 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 Right. We bring no lightning bugs in the house. That's right. Come on, y'all ain't, y'all ain't helping me at all. Yeah. Yeah. To get you hot in the bed, you lay on the floor because it look cooler down on the floor. Come on, y'all, y'all, y'all. Y'all got to learn how to make it. Y'all don't know how to make it. We get so caught up in our stuff. So caught up in our stuff. And I think God is trying to get us to understand, man, seek the kingdom. Seek the kingdom. Some people seek generators more than they seek the kingdom. You seek extension cards more than you seek the kingdom. You got to seek the kingdom and its righteousness. Everything. He said, I'll, I'll add everything to you. Yeah. He, tells, he tells the 12, go, make disciples, uh-huh. go into the nations, heal, cast out demons, do all of these things. Yeah. Do all the things that I'm saying to you. Go, preach, do these things. Look at verse number 11. I wish I had more time. Verse number 11, y'all there? Yeah. Whatever city or town you enter, yeah. inquire. Who in it is worthy. Who's going to receive the word? Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Look at that word worthy. (laughs) Don't you go in like you the beggar. (laughs) Don't you go in like you the one that's needy. You go in and you find out who's worthy of having you in their house. Because when you invite me in your house, you just invite the kingdom into your house. Look at your neighbor and say, you'll be surprised how close you're seated to the kingdom. you you're seated. Woo, you're seated close to the kingdom. I need you to know that you're a king's kid. I need you to know that. I need, listen, even Jesus said, he said, no longer do I call you servants. For servant knoweth not what his master does. He says, now I call you friend. Glory to God. I call you friend. You're no longer servants. Now you're a friend. You're a friend of God. You got to know that and you got to walk in your royalty. Some of us are living beneath our privilege because we don't understand our royalty. 
you got to know, man, your father's a king. If you seek first the kingdom. Now, listen, here's your homework. Guess what your homework is? Guess what your homework is? To go seek the kingdom. No, for real, for real. F-R, F-R. No, I, no, no, I need you. Because some of y'all did your homework. Some of y'all didn't. Is that quite a guy? I'm with you when you're right, Pastor. <laughs> Some of y'all did your homework. <laughs> Some of y'all did your homework and some of y'all didn't. Some of y'all didn't seek the kingdom this week. Some of y'all did. You brought back your homework. <laughs> okay, how much time I got? Okay, I gotta hurry. I gotta hurry. I gotta hurry. I gotta hurry. Okay, so, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to finish reading Matthew 10, 5 through 22. I don't have time to deal with it today. I want you to finish reading Matthew chapter 10. And y'all do the homework. If your pastor asks you to do something that's good, do it. Just, just, you'll be surprised the blessing that's connected to it. Just do it. Go back. Keep, continue to seek. The kingdom is multifaceted. You're not going to find it in just one, just because you reached, you Googled it. You're not, you you got to keep looking. You got to keep digging. You got to, you got to go and look, read every scripture that Jesus ever taught about the kingdom and ask God to give you revelation because y'all, we got to get this kingdom thing in our hearts because of the kingdom in us. I didn't know why he put it in me. I know what, what that means. That the kingdom is in me? What does that mean? I need y'all to look that up. I need y'all to, to do some research. What does that mean? That the kingdom, get, get your Bible study group together and y'all start looking and start, start exploring that. What does that mean that the kingdom is in me? What does that mean? I wish I had time to deal with this. I'm, I'm going to give you these points. Um, listen, I don't, I don't want you to write them down. Take a picture of them if you must. I don't want you to write them down, but I do want you to consider what I'm about to say. I was going to deal with tonight, if I had more time, religion versus kingdom. I was going to deal with that tonight. Religion versus kingdom. Maybe I'll get a chance to come back. Maybe I'll get a chance to come back and deal with that another time. Religion versus kingdom. Um, Matt, Mark chapter 7. Don't, don't, don't turn there. Just look at the screen. Mark chapter 7 verse 13 reads like this. It says that making the word of God of no effect through your traditions. Tradition that has been handed down through your tra- traditions. The tradition of man actually helps to whitewash, as it were, the teaching of the kingdom. We don't understand kingdom because we're so caught up in our tradition. The things that we do over and over the same way, over and over and over. And that's where we focus. We fight about tradition, and, we, and we've lost the aspect of kingdom. Yeah. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. It's a religious spirit. Here are seven things I want y'all to take. I want y'all to take, I want y'all to take, take pictures of this. No, you don't have time to write them down because my time is up. Um, I want y'all to take pictures of this, and I want y'all to consider what I'm about to share. What I'm about to share with you. Number one, religion preoccupies man until he finds the kingdom. Religion preoccupies man until he finds the kingdom. That's why we got to keep seeking, got to keep looking. Religion. We're going to talk about religious and religious spirits, and hopefully, the Lord kind of keep us on in this vein. Number two, religion is what man does until he finds the kingdom. If you've been in church 15 years and you're still doing religiosity, it's the religion stuff that means you haven't, we haven't found the kingdom yet. Thank God this is not a traditional church. We're not a traditional people. Number three, religion, listen to this. Let's read this together because I, I need you all to get these in your spirit. One, two, ready, read. Religion prepares man to leave earth. The kingdom empowers man to dominate earth. We're so focused on trying to get to heaven that we're not doing what we're supposed to do here on this earth. God gave you Radha. He told you to dominate. I gave you authority. He's all, all authority has been given to me. Now I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, all the power of the enemy. Nothing's happening on. I gave you power to dominate this earth. So you know what that means? That means that everything that's happening in the earth that's bad is our fault. 
We don't get out and vote. We don't try to help change policies. We're not, we're not, oh, oh let me say it like this. We, we're going to do those things. Because this sleeping giant here is going to wake up. We're going to wake up and we're going to be the church that God called us to be. Part of our vision is to exemplify the purpose of church. It's getting back to this kingdom principles. Religion prepares man to leave earth. Kingdom empowers man to dominate. Look at number four. Religion focuses on heaven. But the kingdom focuses on earth. Number five, religion is reaching up to God. The kingdom is God coming down to man. Y'all think about this. Number six, religion wants to escape earth. The kingdom impacts, influences, and changes earth. (sighs) And lastly, religion seeks to take earth to heaven. Kingdom seeks to bring heaven to earth. That means we got work to do. We got work to do. I'm not out of word, but I am out of time. Let's pray. Father, the words that you've spoken in this building tonight, let them become seed in good ground of our hearts. God, we we see the stuff that's happening around us and we realize and recognize that something's going on in the earth. Trees being uprooted, trees falling off and falling on houses and just all the rains and the storms and the winds, God, something is going on. Father, help us to be sensitive. God, you've even given us authority and power over the winds and the waves, but sometimes we run from those things instead of taking our dominion. Father, help us to know who we are. Ignite that fire in our heart. Raise up that sleeping giant that's on the inside of us, God. Help us to speak the word of faith. God, help us to do your work. Help us to be about our Father's business. Help us to work while it's day, because nighttime is certainly coming, a time when we can no longer work. Help us to be busy with our hands. Help us that whatever we find ourselves doing, help us to do it to your glory and to your honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you.